gonna sleep over that. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Welcome, welcome. So, last time I told you how to give a really good apology, how to make a sincere apology, right? Um, so this time we're going to look at some apologies from celebrities and see maybe where they went wrong. So in case you don't know, this is what's next and I'm Halo Eating Gray. All right, so I'm going to get right into this. So I'm looking at Doja Cat. Okay, so her apology, this was back in May 24th. Apparently, I don't follow Doja Cat, but <laughs> apparently she uh, was in a chat room that made some racist comments and also she has a song called didn't do nothing which is like kind of a racist thing that people say about people who were killed by the cops um black people specifically and let's see what else i don't know i guess she said other things that have bothered people i don't know but here is her apology let's look at it so I want to address what's been happening on Twitter. I've used public chat rooms to socialize since I was a child. I shouldn't have been on some of those chat room sites, but I personally have never been involved in any racist conversations. I am sorry to everyone that I offended. I am a black woman. Half of my family is black from South Africa, and I'm very proud of where I come from. As for the old song that resurfaced, it was in no way tied to anything outside of my own personal experience. It was written in response to people who often use that term to hurt me. I made an attempt to flip its meaning, but I recognized that it was a bad decision to use the term in my music. I understand my influence and impact, and I'm taking this all very seriously. I love you all, and I'm sorry for upsetting or hurting any of you. That's not my character, and I'm determined to show that everybody show that to everybody moving forward. Thank you. One of the things I talked about was <laughs> in the previous video, and if you haven't watched it, I am gonna link that video in the description of this video, so be sure to click on it, watch it, and hopefully learn. That's what I want you to do. Anyways, so okay, so she says she's used public chat room since she was a child and she shouldn't have been in some of those chat rooms. We don't really need to know. <laughs> I mean, like, it re like on one hand, it's, it's an irrelevant statement. That's first off. But also, it's like an excuse. And I talked about how no explanation should be given in a apology at all because any explanation sounds like an excuse so this may not be in her mind an excuse for her behavior but that's what it comes off like she's saying well i've been doing it since i was young please don't hate me okay so yeah um so yeah she should probably not put a statement in there like that because it makes it like she's trying to get sympathy um then she says she's personally never been involved in any racist conversations i'm sorry to everyone that i offended now, it was my understanding that there's actually video along with this, which I haven't seen, so I'm not going to comment on it much, but if there's video saying that you that you weren't where people could see you on the video, is probably not the right move. Also, the fact that she pretty much, like, what are you apologizing for at that moment? You're like, oh, I've been in chat rooms. It's just what I do since I was young. It's just, you know, something that I've done, and I probably shouldn't do it, but... I've been doing it, so there is that. But I didn't say anything racist, mind you, so you guys are mad at me for saying some racist. I didn't say anything racist, but I'm sorry if I offended you. If you don't feel that you said anything offensive, then saying that you're sorry for offending someone, like, that doesn't make any sense. It really negates your your whole apology. Um, She went on to talk about she's a black woman. Uh, and proud of where she comes from. Also, irrelevant. It's just not something that needs to be there. Uh, she did address the song. I don't know this song. Um, 
once again, there's an explanation. Oh, it was tied to something that I went through. And, oh, that was probably not the best decision. Like, there's nothing necessarily wrong with the decision itself. If you really feel like, oh, this was my reasoning for that, then don't apologize. Just explain. Like, you can do that. You can have that option. Like, well, here, let me clarify. That's where this comes from. Don't be like, oh, well, let me release this apology to you and then basically be like, oh, I regret all these things that I did. No, you don't regret it because what are you regretting? Like, I I don't get what you regret in this moment. You don't regret doing the song because the song was about your personal experience. So why use that kind of language? You see what I'm saying? Like, it, that doesn't make any sense. It just comes off when you have things like this, when you have explanations in there. In your apology, this is what happens. People look at it and go, well, if that's how you feel, and if that was the case, then why did you say that you apologize and that you regret that? So clearly you don't regret it and you're not sorry because you don't think you did anything wrong or you didn't think you did the thing that people said you did. And what you did do, you did for this reason or that reason. Like, it just makes you seem disingenuous. That's really what it is. Okay, and so... um you know, so, and then another thing is, I, I don't know, I'm weirded out by the thank you at the end. <laughs> it makes me feel like uh, she just gave a speech. I don't know, like, thank you for supporting me. And I'd like to thank God and my family for these awards. Like, it just, I don't know. I feel like she kind of probably could have left that out. Um, and emotional language. There's a lot of emotional language. I love you. And. It's not my character, but it is your character because it is what you did. And had these kind of things never came back up, I don't know when she was in the chat room. I don't know when she did the song. She says it was an old song. So had these things came back up, had not came back up, I mean, we wouldn't obviously get an apology. So it, it's your character. Like it is. But, I mean, I don't know. And then once again, saying something like, oh, it's just my character. Or, oh, I was just so stupid at that point. Or, oh, I was young and dumb. Like, these are, once again, explanations. And explanations really take away from what you're trying to say. It just is what it is. I mean, that's just kind of where you go wrong. When you start explaining things, when you start using emotional language, when you negate the thing that you said you're apologizing for, you negate even doing it. There is... I think a lot of times, especially with the celebrities that choose to apologize or feel a need to for maybe the sake of their career, they don't actually feel sorry for what they did and they actually feel like they were justified in it. But you got to realize that if you feel justified, I'm sorry, I apologize, please forgive me, I regret it, those types of things should not come into it. Just saying, you know, I just want to clarify this was the situation. You can clarify all day. I mean, people will forgive you or they won't, they'll move on or they won't, but you can clarify all day. All day but the moment you apologize you cannot explain you cannot explain during the apology and you cannot explain after the apology so if you're not a hundred percent sure that you want to apologize don't do it don't do it I mean it's just reality don't do it I know you're gonna to have to take the whatever hit but if you apologize and it's disingenuous and then you say these other comments or you throw in extra things then you just look bad then you you lose more fans because people are like man I kind of had your back until you said that ignorance okay okay so another person was trina um trina went hard before she apologized so trina made some comments in regards to um people rioting and property being destroyed and stuff and she reacted the way i think a lot of us have, have heard people say like oh you know you're destroying things you're burning out the community rioting's not the way whatever kind of way and um she went on to say that like she wanted the cops to get the animals out of the street and you know in reference to the protesters and the rioters and the looters and there are three different things so i think i want to make that distinction every single time um, and you know, of course they're sitting there trying to tell like, no, like Trina, like, no, nah, this is not okay. Like, you know, they're protesting police brutality and people have to fear like getting pulled over by the cops. And she's just like, I don't fear the cops. I got my license and my registration. <laughs> and so <laughs> like, okay, well, 
I hope that helps. And so um, people went at her to apologize and people went hard on Twitter. I know at least for like maybe like two days. And she was pretty much like, uh, nah, I ain't apologizing. No, whatever. I would drag y'all. Leave me alone. Whatever, whatever. So it became, you know, is she going to apologize? Which you know, it's a toss up. I can see her not apologizing in that situation. I can see her just standing by it, letting it blow over or whatever. But she did actually come out and apologize. And I don't remember everything she said, but she basically was like, I talked to, you know, I sat down with Trick. I talked to some friends, you know, I, I just wasn't really clear on what was what the situation was. And, and I apologize for making those kind of comments. And um, I was really glad that she apologized. First of all, I think her apology felt a little bit more genuine because I don't feel like I could see her just as easily not apologizing, like, and it just not being that big a deal to her. So I don't think that she apologized for the sake of her career. I mean, her career is what it is. She's been around for a very long time. Like, it is what it is. Um, she didn't. I don't think she lost sales or gained sales because of this. I think that she just, her career is what it is. People buy her music if they buy it or they don't if they don't, right? Like I heard people even kind of making the joke that like, oh yeah, I'm going to cancel you. I'm not going to buy your music. Oh wait, I haven't bought your music in years. Like, you know what I'm saying? So her career just is what it is. So I don't think it had anything to do with her career. I think it had more to do with like her personal like um, her personal relationships that she has, um, whether it's professional, whether it's personal, but like those actual friendships, those connections, I think, especially like her and Trick. I mean, I, the first time I ever heard of Trick, that was the first time I ever heard of Trick Daddy. So, you know, I've always linked those two in my mind. I imagine that they are friends and I know that this was like a riff. He was like, hold up, like, you know, the police are brutalizing like black men, you know, and and a lot of black men identify with, you know, the men that are being killed by the police. A lot of black men identify with George Floyd. A lot of black men can, you know, have these stories of being pulled over and fearing for their life and things like that. And for her to just kind of downplay all that and just be like, whatever, I have my license, I have my registration. Like it comes off cold probably to people that she really knows. So sometimes I think um, a celebrity is best to apologize because it's probably going to affect personal relationships. So it's best for them to really, you know, really think about what they're saying and, and definitely apologize if they feel sorry. So I think her apology is very genuine because I think the reasoning behind it was genuine. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to move on to Terry Crews. Now, um, <laughs> so the most like messed up thing about what Terry Crews said, which if you don't know, I think I want to read that for you. He said, he tweeted, this was on June 7th, 2020. He tweeted, defeating white supremacy with out white people creates black supremacy. Equality is the truth. Like it or not, we are in this together. I lost sleep over that. Like, I'm not going to lie. I was like, really? Like, I went to bed. I woke up like a few minutes later and I just laid there and was like, but what the, but what the hell does he mean by black supremacy? What would that look like? I still can't wrap my head up. Like, how is how are we going to get to black supremacy? Like, like, okay, yeah, you right. Maybe in like 200 years, we'll get to black supremacy. I mean, like, what the hell? Like, like, that's not going, like, we're not going to get there. Like, black people account for less than 13% of the American population. Like, you get that, right? And like, white people account for over 70% of it. There is no way that we can inflict black supremacy on white people without the help of white people like i mean like it just doesn't make sense so it's like honestly i guess you should say defeating white supremacy with white people will create black supremacy because that's literally the only way you could create it i just <sighs> okay so the worst thing about what he said is that he gave these people who are racist who are ignorant who fear like 
they fear black spirit. Like they fear that like by giving black people equal rights, by treating black people equally, by equality for all, that they somehow lose something. They they fear them. They fear that they will be put at a disadvantage for black people. And, and in many cases, they fear that they are always already put <laughs> at a disadvantage because of things like affirmative action. Pretty much just that. I mean, I don't know that it, I don't want to get into all those things because that's the whole conversation, but I've heard them complain about like, um, scholarships for minorities, which, uh, you can look it up. You guys, white people get those scholarships too. It's not like white males even like, it's not like they can't get those scholarships and most scholarship money that's awarded every year is awarded to white males. Even with the scholarships for minorities, white males are getting most of the scholarships to go to college, but yet somehow it, it bothers them. I've heard them, I've flat out been in those discussions where people complained or, or, you know, claimed that they, you know, could, they were at a disadvantage because of the programs that are for black people. And yeah, so I don't think you want to give people ammunition this phrase to fall back on and i have actually seen people say since this tweet came out oh you're a black supremacist and this is black supremacy <laughs> like it's, it can't possibly be like, it <laughs> what like i mean that's pretty much where i'm like what you can't I don't know how to argue that because I feel like you were lost. <laughs> like, I feel like you've lost him. Never mind. Um, of course, what I would have predicted, Terry Crews did not apologize for this. Um, which isn't the first time that he says something and people were like, what the hell, dude? What are you talking about? Like, or why are you choosing to take this stance? Um, I think probably most of his fan base is white. Honestly, that's really what it is. Um, so I don't think he, I don't know. I feel like he's removed. It's stuff like this is just really tone deaf and, and doesn't make sense. I mean, I know that maybe he wants to foster this connection between like white people and black people. But like, have you seen the protests? It's not just black people out there. There are literally white people out there. There are, there are people are protesting all over the country and all over the world. Think about certain places where there just really isn't that many black people yet they're protesting. I mean, I live in a almost entirely white area, right? And they have protests here. Like it's, I mean, obviously white people are already working with us. So I mean, I get that maybe you're trying to foster this communication and this cooperation, but like to scare people with black supremacy, something that just literally is not going to happen. And aside from that, no, I don't think it's the time to cooperate. Like, I don't think we're there yet. I think that yes, the protesting us coming together and us making people aware, that's great. But right now the time is for the white people who have become aware of the struggle and the non-black people, if they weren't aware of the struggle, whatever race you are, um, go and educate yourself. And I think it's a time for black people to really start putting pen to paper on what we want, what we feel we need and putting it together in a way that it can be presented because the reality of it is, is that certain policies need to change. Certain laws need to change. Amendments need to change. It's not something that we can do on our own. Like, like literally if all the black people who are eligible to vote, if all of us voted for a cause and none of the white people did, even if all the minorities did, except for white men and white women, right? It would not pass. We do not have the numbers. We cannot put white people at a disadvantage. We don't have the numbers to do so. We would obviously need the support from white people. They make up more than 70% of the, the you know, population. So like this idea that like black supremacy is something, uh, like, please tell me when we get close to black supremacy. Like, then we'll hold it back. Like, oh, no, we're going too far. We're at the black supremacy part. We got to rein it back in. Step it on back. Like, I mean, I just can't. I, 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 
why and of course i would have called it he's not going to apologize he's just going to clarify which is what he proceeded to do he went back and forth with people he's talked about being um called a coon and an uncle tom for promoting equality and i mean it's just like And he actually said this for real. He said, any person who calls me a coon or an Uncle Tom for promoting equality is a black supremacist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I don't really call people coons or Uncle Toms, but... <sighs> Not a damn thing. It's not a damn thing. Somebody tell him. No, nobody tell him. Nobody. Just let it go because I don't think that he's going to ever apologize or give any kind of real apology because I don't think he sees anything wrong with what he said. Um, and another thing about this is that to some extent, it was just the wrong time to say this and in the wrong way to say this. Like I said, there are people who really fear this like black supremacy thing that just literally would not be able to happen in their entire life, even if it ever could happen. Like even if it was ever possible in America for black supremacy to reign supreme, it's not gonna happen in any of our lifetimes. There's just not enough black people here. There's just not, like, you know, it just cannot happen that way. Like, I wanna see, like, I really want there to be a movie uh, about black supremacy. I want, I want more information <laughs> about it because it's really bugging me. Okay, but why give those people ammo? And sometimes we got to watch where we say stuff and when we decide to stand up and be like, oh, you know, black people, keep in mind. Oh, please sit down. Please sit down. Don't do it. Like typically once people say, well, as we out here, I just want my black people to remember. No, I don't want to hear anything else that you have to say at this point. If you wasn't reminding us of stuff before now, then shut up. Like, I don't care. I'm glad that we are moving away from checking what celebrities have to say on these issues. <laughs> I actually did see something where someone was like, we're not listening to celebrities anymore. And I'm like, thank you. They're just people. That, that's it and and typically we hold them up as these like pillars of the community and they are the leaders and you know what the media uses them they go hey 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 won't you say something to calm your black brethren down and they come and say you guys it can't be right and we can't be looting it's like hold up sit down nobody asks you sit the hell down sit down like, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, a lot of times it's a case of it's not the time and you're not the person. But no, I do not think for a second that Terry Crews will ever apologize. So, if you think that he will apologize, uh, stop holding your breath.